Hello everyone, welcome to the second tutorial of Weka Workbench for Machine Learning and Data Mining. From this tutorial uh, on, we will see how we can use Weka in order to uh, mine data or in order to analyze your data for machine learning or data mining activities. So there are several advantages of using Weka in these days because Weka has four applications that are very important in machine learning. That's Explorer, Experimenter, Knowledge Flow, and Simple CLI. So whenever you run or fire Weka, then you'll be able to have a GUI chooser just like this one. And from that GUI chooser, you can you can select any any one of uh, of these four applications. So for this moment, we will stick with Explorer and explore some of the features of Explorer, and we will see what we can do and what we can do with those. Uh, features of this application explorer of uh, Weka. So one key important thing about choosing Weka Explorer is that when you are having your data set sized small to medium, this is going to be a very useful tool, the explorer, uh, to analyze your data. But the thing is that if for uh, the explorer, the way it works is that whenever you put data to analyze for explorer, that time explorer uh, uploads or takes all the data in, into its main memory, into the main memory of your computer. So if you're having huge number of data, large number of data sets, that time it's not a good good idea to choose Explorer because that time your application may get run, may get run slower, slower and, and uh, it may crash at some times. So this is a very good tool to analyze uh, small to medium sized data. So if you choose Explorer, you'll be, you'll be able to see a uh, uh, graphical windows just like this one and this is a very helpful uh, tool and it has lots of tabs you can see here pre-process classify cluster associate select attributes visualize and so on but for this tutorial we're going to explore what we can play with uh, pre-process tab so uh, in our previous tutorial tutorial we have learned how to create an R file that's the that's the main file that's the file Weka knows and where you are going to put your put all of your data for analysis. So uh, this is very helpful that Weka for with the Weka package you you can access lots of R file predefined. This is predefined by the authors of Weka. So in order to find those files, you have to open you have to click the open file uh, button and you have to go to the place where you have uh, installed Weka. It's uh, program files for me. Okay, sorry. Sorry about that, because we are searching for some R files that's in Weka 3.6. That's my version. You, you, yours can be uh, others, other version. So inside Weka, you can see a directory called data. And if you click data, and you can see lots of R files predefined for you for your uh, playing. And they are uh, given to you as a gift from Weka authors. So we were playing with the weather.r in our previous example, so we are going to stick with that one. So when you load the, this data, so you have to remember that when you are playing with Explorer of Weka, at that time whenever you are loading a data file or R file, those data are going to straight are straightly going to the main memory of your computer. So if you have large number of data from large number of data sets, that time this is not a good idea to choose Explorer. Anyway. So uh, you can see uh, that we have some information about the current relation. The relation name is weather. Instances is 14. That means that in your R file, there are 14 uh, data or 14 instances of data and five attributes. That means uh, the file contains five features. And those features are uh, listed here. The first one is outlook. Uh, second one is temperature, third humidity, fourth windy, and fifth is play. So whenever you select Outlook, I have feature here, you can see that uh, this uh, pane is showing you some information about the selected attribute. So uh, the, in, if, you, if you carefully examine the actual R file, you can see that there is no missing values. Okay, what's the missing value? Sometimes when you are pre-processing or processing your data and converting those data into R file, this is very possible that you're going to miss some of those values. So whenever you are missing some of those values, you, you just do not put null like in, uh, in SQL. You just put a question mark. So 
uh, that means that value is missing so if you have 10 values missing from 10,000 of data that's not going to be affecting uh, that much uh, your machine learning uh, process so there is no missing value for this particular feature and this is a nominal type of feature that means it doesn't take any kind of numeric values and you can recall from our previous tutorial that Outlook actually has three values sunny overcast and rainy and they are listed here you can see sunny overcast and rainy and among those 14 instances five are sunny four are overcast and five are rainy so this is going to be very useful for you uh, if you want to analyze your data statistically okay uh, so the distinct three means that there are three distinct values sunny overcast and rainy and it automatically finds out what what's the number of uh, distinct values uh, for this particular feature if you if you select temperature and you can see that temperature is not actually a nominal type of uh, feature that's a numeric type of feature and uh, among them 12 are distinct that means two of them uh, two of those temperature uh, data inside uh, your weather.r file they're uh, the same they're with the same value so there is no missing value for this uh, particular feature and 10 is 10 among them are unique that means they do not match with each other so among those uh, features at uh, 14 features uh, the minimum number uh, is 64 maximum is 85 and this is for uh, re this is to boost your statistical analysis uh, that they also provide you the mean and the standard deviation for any particular numeric type of feature not for nominal features you can see that mean is 73.571 so it it, it adds off uh, it is sub it adds all the temperature values in your R file and then divided it to divided it by the number of instances and it gets the mean and so as the standard deviation humidity this is also a numeric type of uh, feature so I'm not going to explain that again because uh, it's uh, similar to temperature windy this is not a numeric this is nominal type of feature and we have two distinct values here one is true and one uh, the other is false so there are six instances that says that it is windy and eight instances that say it's not windy and if you choose a uh, play uh, feature this play feature is actually the classification feature it's either yes or no so we have uh, yes file nine times in your R file and uh, we have no five times in your R files and we have two distinct values so you can carefully observe that what this classification feature particularly play is showing us we can see that when you are hovering your mouse here you can see that nine instances are blue and they are yes and five instances are red so they are no so if you go back to other features you can see that five of them states that sunny and most of them are red that means that in your R file the data is uh, exactly in the same way that uh, if it is sunny most of the times you're not allowed to play outside and if it is overcast outside then all of the instances are saying that you you are eligible to play outside on the other hand for rainy we have mostly you can play outside if it is raining outside you can see the red portion is much more uh, smaller than the blue portion by this uh, you can say what's ex exactly happening in your data so as for uh, temperature we have 64 up to 85 and you can see uh, that whenever the temperature uh, is uh, uh, is getting uh, greater and greater that time uh, you are allowed to play outside but when it's very cold outside you, sh you are not allowed to play outside F same for humidity it is uh, if it is not that much humid uh, then you are allowed to play outside and if it is getting very humid you are going to be sticky when you are playing outside so it's forbidding you to play outside okay so uh, I mentioned one thing uh, oh, ah, it's okay I think okay for windy uh, feature you can see that uh, six of them are true if it is really windy 
most of the times well it is a 50 50 chance if it is uh, windy then you can play or you cannot play but if it is not windy there is uh, the most of the times you are allowed to play outside and the red portion is very smaller than the blue portion so that's it for this tutorial uh, so in this tutorial we have learned how to use uh, the explorers preprocess tab there are some other things here open file we have uh, already seen that open url open db generate edit save and this is the most important thing filter we'll talk about filter in some later time uh, in, in uh, any other tutorial but in this tutorial we have seen uh, how to open a file open an r file how to see the number of attributes instances and attributes and uh, what uh, we can do actually what we do get from uh, these uh, uh, features and their information so that's it for today